Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this morning. So still looking at two different storm systems through three fourth. Storm number one, I'm still calling it the robust quick strike storm system, heavy snow, short amount of time. It's also gonna bring a lot of wind, some 50 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts on 226 and probably 227 as well. Here are the latest numbers, 10 to 20 inches in the Wasatch, mainly afternoon 226 into the morning of 227. Tetons, 10 to 20 inches, 226, 227. Colorado, 10 to 20 inches. So you can see all three um, states fall into that same category. Um, afternoon 226 through 227 in Colorado. Now storm number two is still looking major, at least as big as no, storm number one, maybe larger. And that happens between 229 and 34. All right, let me take you over to water vapor satellite imagery this morning. Give it a lay of the land. So moisture aloft is in your whites, your blues, your greens. And I marked this storm yesterday and it hasn't moved a whole lot. But it's still heading towards California. Um, and piece number two, this is actually the main part of all of this coming down, the trough. And this is going to ride that northern branch. So we're looking at two different branches of the jet, southern branch. Pretty easy to spot. Northern branch will bring in the main low. And the two, there will be some merging of this energy over the Intermountain West and a definite frontal boundary that drives some very heavy snow. Um, a really quick burst of heavy orographic snow across the Tetons, the Wasatch, and parts of Colorado as well. In fact, here's the jet stream forecast by tonight at 11.30. Now by tomorrow, there's your, um, there's your merger with the northern branch buckling bringing in its energy, southern branch, and a lot of wind. You can see there's a lot of jet energy with this. And so the, to the two storms will then roll across the, the Intermountain West. All right, moving ahead. Here's 227. Still continues in Colorado, and then it moves away. Now we're looking at the next storm system loading up, and it's a deeper trough. It's definitely got more to it. You can see um, uh, the buckling of that jet on 3-2. So 3-2 is a key day and so is 3-3 as it moves across Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. And then by the time we get into 3-4, it's wrapping up in Colorado and then it moves away on 3-5. And that's what we're left with on 3-5. All right, looking at the moisture content, here's the forecast radar and the satellite. So that's the situation by this afternoon. Um, the bulk of the snow is up in BC, Pacific Northwest, Northern Idaho, Northern Northwest Montana. All right, here's 226. Everything's coming south. There's 226 in the afternoon. So that's the key window, right? Two, afternoon 226 through 227. Everything picks up in intensity. You can see the deeper blues. You can also see the frontal boundary driving that heavy snow through the Wasatch right there into Colorado into the morning of 227. By 227 in the afternoon, still snowing in Colorado, but the main low is already moving away and the snow will get lighter by late 227 into 228 and then it's gone. Here comes the next storm system out of the Pacific Northwest. Now this one's gonna dig a little further to the south and this one will take um, a couple of days to move through California. So two days worth of snow. We're looking at very heavy snow and the Sierra out of this thing. There's 3-1. There's 3-1 in the afternoon, and there's that heavy banding of snow with that jet-induced lift across uh, the Wasatch and the Tetons. And then, so there's 3-2 in the afternoon. Here we are in a 3-3 in the morning, Colorado's turn. The whole thing moves out by 3-4 in the afternoon, and then we're into a little quieter period on 3-5. All right, my latest numbers. Here are my latest totals. Just today alone, 225, all the snows up in the Pacific Northwest, B.C., northern Idaho and northwest Montana. Moving into the second period, 226 through 228, 10 to 20 inches, pretty common. Wasatch, Tetons, and Colorado. You can see the numbers in Colorado holding pretty steady from yesterday afternoon's update um, with some pretty good numbers. This flow will tend to favor Crested Butte, um, looking at probably 20, 21 inches and probably 8, 16, 17, 18 up around Snowmass, Aspen, Buttermilk, and the Highlands. Um, the numbers in Steamboat have, have trended down just a touch, uh, looking at decent numbers up on the Continental Divide, Loveland A Basin, looking at about a foot of accumulation. Up in the Pacific Northwest and BC, great numbers, probably 8 to 14 across Kicking Horse and Revelstoke, 1 to 3 feet up there in the Pacific Northwest and uh, the coastal range of British Columbia. All right, here's the second storm system, 229 through 35. 
I'm um, looking at a couple of feet up there around the uh, the Wasatch, one to two feet in the Tetons, and probably another 10 to 20 in Colorado. The numbers in the Sierra have trended down just a touch, but still looking at probably three to four, maybe five feet of accumulation. Uh, about a foot up there in Idaho, about a foot in uh, Montana, and another one to two feet in the Pacific Northwest. Decent numbers up in interior BC, another eight to 12 through that time period. All right, let's go to the Northeast. So this is uh, uh, 225 through 35, and only looking at light snow accumulations here. And a lot of this is associated with the storm going through on 228 into early 229. It's mainly rain, even at the major ski areas. Um, it, it'll probably end as some snow, late 228 and early 229, but even at that, very light snow accumulations. Okay, guys, we'll end on the map for 226 through 228. This is the quick strike robust storm system. It's all going to happen pretty fast. Um, some decent accumulations. And then, of course, we've got the second storm after that. That looks pretty good, too. All right, thanks for tuning in here, guys. Always appreciate it, and take care.